welcome to the podcast of Of Course They Make Me Crazy. It's about crazy family stories. We all have one, right? More importantly, it's for those of you living with someone who suffers with a mental illness. You can start to feel lost in their world. Now, I get it. I grew up with a bipolar mom addicted to pain pills. Hoping the stories shared here will help you through difficult days. It's not all serious. We laugh and joke, too. If you have little ones around, pop in your headphones. Adults only, please. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me on Of Course They Make Me Crazy. I'm April Norris, the host. So I'm solo today, people. You know what? Coming up on June 12th, that will be the one year anniversary of this podcast. That's crazy to me. And strangely, June 12th will also be the fifth anniversary of my mom, Joni's death which is also crazy to me. It's crazy to me because I don't remember launching this podcast specifically on that date on purpose. So I messaged my sister Amanda to see if she remembers us doing that on purpose or if it's just a damn coincidence. And she doesn't remember either. (laughs) Good God. It's only been one year and neither one of us can remember. So, you know, when I first started this podcast, she was helping me out by sharing family stories too. When I got the nudge in my soul to start this podcast, I called her and I said, Hey, I have all these little stories written down about our crazy ass family and I'm going to start a podcast and you're going to be my sidekick. And don't worry, I'm going to do all the work. You just come along and you add perspective and add whatever you can remember. You know, somebody's got to back me up because I don't think you'd believe me with some of the stuff I have to tell you. If you didn't have someone there, you know, uh, saying, yeah, April's right. That did happen. And as a matter of fact, here's another thing that happened. So uh, she's like, okay. And that was a big deal for Amanda to be part of this because she's shy. She's shy. You know, we're 10 years apart. We're total opposites. Uh, She lives in Cleveland. I live in Colorado and Cleveland, Ohio. I live in Colorado. So we're just, you know, just so far away. We're in two different time zones. We have different schedules. So I just went solo and kind of did it on my own. But I'm, I'm happy that she did it with me. Uh, anyway, seeing that the podcast launch date is also the date of my mom's death, it, it kind of creeped me out, you guys. <laughs> it really did. In a good way. I was like, what? Wow. My, like, my mind blown. You know, the universe, I think, works in mysterious ways. And who knows? Maybe it was, you know, my mom's way of saying, hey, girl, keep it going. You know, you're doing good. This is what you should be doing. Uh, at least that's the way I'm going to see it. (laughs) So, you know, many of you already know that I started the podcast in my mom's honor. And that is because I felt like she had a story to tell. She grew up with an alcoholic dad who left his six kids and wife for a man that he met at a nudist beach. You know, and then, of course, my grandma, her mom, lost it. And just went down a dark path after that, as who wouldn't, right? And started taking a lot of pills, popping pills. She snapped out of it, but the pill thing was always kind of a a struggle for her, grandma, and mom too. And then my mom got pregnant with me at 15 and a half years old with a physically abusive boyfriend. The doctor that delivered me essentially became her drug dealer He gave her almost every addictive narcotic on the market to help her deal. And so she really just never had uh, a chance in a way. You know, I was talking to my uncle the other day, and he's like, your mom just didn't have a chance. But, uh, you know, with all that said, she was an amazing mom. You've heard me say that before. She was an amazing mom. But that trauma caught up with her. And her mind and her body broke down. And then she was diagnosed with bipolar. She stopped taking care of herself. And the only thing that she cared about was taking pills in hopes of not feeling the pain and the sadness as much. So I felt her story needed to be told and that my story growing up with her needed to be told too. 
because I'm hoping our stories resonate with you in some strange way and help you. So have you seen that movie, Hillbilly Elegy? It's it's based off of J.D. Vance's memoir. It's about hard times, well, hard times of him growing up in Kentucky and the Appalachians. And that then their family ended up moving to Ohio, I think is how it went. So I found the book at the airport looking for something to read on the plane. And when I picked it up, I thought, Hillbilly Elegy? And then I read the back of it and I, and I was like, damn, this sounds like my family. So I read it. I got it. The book was great. Uh, I don't even know actually if I finished it, but I, I got to a, the like the very end of it. And then before I got to the end of it, the movie came out. And it depicts what so many of us imagine hillbillies are. I mean, it's total stereotype. It's about unhealthy choices the poor and the middle class people make. It's about addiction. It's about family violence. There's also a bunch of politics when you go in and you read about like the view, you know, the views when you start to read about that. But that's not how I was watching the movie. I was watching the movie through the eyes of someone who had a similar upbringing. So you're probably thinking, well, April, that movie just sounds fucking sad. Well, <laughs> it, it was sad. It was sad. But there's humor in it, too. And for me, the movie was it was even better than the book. You know, everybody was always like, wow, the book is so much better than the movie. But in that one, I to me, the movie was better because, at least for me, I could relate to the characters. The characters looked like my family. Their mannerisms were even similar. It brought back memories of my heel below roots. It sure did. I cried watching it. It made me sad. But... It also made me feel like my upbringing was a little normal. In watching it gave me a little peace. Even though I know no, I know nothing is normal. I know that. But down to Glenn Close, her character. So she played Vance's uh, grandma in the movie. Um, she had this. She had short gray permed hair. You know, like all the grandmas do. Like they're all short permed. And my grams did too. Uh, although my Grams was much prettier than uh, Glenn Close's character in that movie. But uh, my Grams also wore long t-shirts with like pictures of damn dogs, you know, and those t-shirts from Walmart. And I love me some Walmart, but you know what kind of t-shirts I'm talking about, right? Like they, they could have like Christmas stuff on it and it's in the middle of July. <laughs> They're still wearing it. And uh, Glenn Close's character always had a cigarette hanging out of her hand or her mouth. And, uh, you know, my Grams did too. It was like, strangely, it was like a home watching that movie. And it, pro <laughs> it probably gave me a little peace knowing that I wasn't ever going back to those times, you know, but it, it maybe if I was in it still and living that, in watching that, my movie probably would not have been um, the best for my mental health. But I was able to watch it and look back and be like, you know what, I'm in a better place now. And so is everyone else. But um, yeah, I'm not sure why I got into that. Oh, I know what. Well, that's why I started the podcast, for God's sakes. Oh, see my memory for the love. You know, hearing other stories like that movie even, reading that book, it has helped me compartmentalize things that have happened to me. And so that is what I hope this podcast does for you. Okay, so I got back on track and it didn't take me five minutes. <laughs> I, that can happen with me sometimes. I'm sure it happens with you too. You're probably thinking, oh yeah, went upstairs, forgot what I went up there for. But uh, I wanted to share why I popped on to do this episode, well, I pop on every first and third Tuesday of the month. At least I sure do try. Um, I wanted to share an email I got the other day. And, you know, I get really nice emails, so thank you if you've reached out to me. Um, and, you know, people will reach out and say, hey, thank you for sharing your stories and doing what you do. And then I've just gotten a few about sound quality could be better, which is true. It could be better. And that's a work in progress, people. I promise you. I actually demoed a few new um, uh, recording programs, but I didn't like them. So 
I'm still in the search. I'm still in the search. I'm a one-man band working full-time woman here, okay? I'm trying. (laughs) But I'm really excited for the days that I can just do this. And I think that that day will be here soon. So I'm super excited about that. But the email I'm referring to uh, wasn't one of those emails. No. This listener is upset with me. And I'm not going to reveal her name. No, 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 I won't do that. But she recently listened to the episode that I did called Borderline Personality Disorder. And that episode did not sit well with her. So she wrote me an email about it. And she wrote, I felt compelled to reach out and to let you know that I really wish you would have treated the BPD episode with compassion. I have BPD because of complex PTSD due to persistent childhood trauma. My mother has dissociative identity disorder and was in a mental institution the majority of my early life. And I have a father who was too preoccupied to give a dang about the emotional needs of his kids. I never had a chance to develop a healthy sense of self. No one was available to teach me to relate to others in a healthy way. How about you talk about that on your show? Question mark. That those who have BPD probably ended up with it from some sort of childhood trauma and that we should treat them with kindness, respect, and compassion. Everyone deserves that, right? Even those with BPD. Not cool, guys. And that is how she ended it. Not cool, guys. So first, I want to say that my intent is never to disrespect anyone. And she's right. Everyone should be treated with kindness, respect, and compassion. I can't imagine the pain she felt growing up with a mom who had dissociative identity disorder, which used to be known as multiple personality disorder. Now, I'm not sure if that's what her mom was dealing with or is dealing with because there are several different symptoms people experience um, when dealing with something like that, just like with borderline personality disorder. You know, someone might be diagnosed with those, but they have totally different symptoms, you know. So, Um, There's just so many avenues you can go down with that. Um, And, you know, I've always said, and I'm I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be one. But during that borderline personality disorder episode, I interviewed Dr. Daniel Lobel. Uh, You've probably heard him a couple of times on my podcast. I, I really like him and honor his expertise. He's a psychologist who has written two books about borderline personality disorder. Uh, and, you know, he's been in the helping families for like 25 years dealing with issues like that. Uh, and by the way, it's a great episode. You, if you haven't listened to it yet, you should. Dr. Lobel goes through like a couple of different scenarios that can really shed light on like how to handle certain situations. I mean, it, it's just it, he goes into a lot. So it's hard for me to explain it without having a whole nother hour, but take a listen to it. There's so many topics and ways and things you can talk about when it comes to BPD. He could certainly, he could write, God, probably a hundred more books on it and still not get them all. And I might be exaggerating, but you get my drift. There's a lot to talk about. As with other mental health disorders, you know, the causes of borderline personality disorder aren't fully understood yet. So I was doing some research on Mayo's Clinic's website, and it says that BPD can be caused by a variety of things like genetics, brain abnormalities, yes, trauma. But in that episode, we talked more about how to handle living with someone who has borderline personality disorder because That is what this podcast is about. It is for those of us who love and live with someone with a mental illness because it is difficult. It is damn difficult. Just like that listener, you know, she, she, you could, you could tell in that email, life wasn't easy. It was traumatic and stressful for her. And so that is why we created this podcast. That is why I created this podcast. And, you know, 
for some of us, if we don't talk about the shit we're going through, you can become sick too. That's why I talk all the time. That's why I I don't want a bunch of that negative shit fermenting inside of me. No. So I talk about it with you and I want to hear your stories. So that listener is right. We did not cover how and why people are diagnosed with it. And I don't believe that we didn't show compassion. Um, It was more so for scenarios of how to deal with someone who is in an episode at that time. But you bet that I will have Dr. Lobel on again soon to talk more about it because that episode was very highly listened to. And I know that it piqued a lot of interest, not just hers. And it probably, you know, pinged a lot of people too in a way that didn't sit well. Um, But it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's if you're living with someone who has that, that might not act like that listener, but they they might have totally other different um, ways of maybe lashing out, um, then that's what we were there for. We were there to give different scenarios and how to deal with those different scenarios. Uh, So she's right. And we will get on that So you just wait for it. It's coming soon, okay? I'm going to reach out to him uh, this week and say, let's get back to it, sir. But um, with that being said, I wanted to thank her for reaching out to me because I appreciate her email and the view that she gave on that episode. And also, I want to thank you for listening. You know, my goal is to create a community with you. And if you ever want to reach out to me, please do. If there is a topic that you're interested in hearing about, let me know about it. And I'm going to try. I'll try to get your answers and your curiosity or your questions about, you know, and, or, and curiosity answered. You know what I'm trying to say. If you have questions and you're curious about some topic, let me know and I'll research it. You know, I don't know if you know this. I might have said this back in previous episodes, but... I spent more than 12 years in the television news business. I was a reporter and I was a photographer and an anchor. Um, And so I've always loved telling stories and researching stories. It was a passion of mine for a long, long time. But I tell you what, the news business can wear you down. I was waking up like at 11 o'clock at night to go to work sometimes. uh, And for a long time because I did the morning shows. So... I got tired, but it was a passion of mine for a long time, and I just slipped out of it for a while, and I'm finding my way back to it just in a different way, talking to you, talking to others, and uh, in my closet, (laughs) which seems really depressing. (laughs) Actually, I kind of like it. It's the comfort of home, you know, but uh, I don't always sit in my closets just when I do the solos. Anywho, um, I love you. I hope you have a great week and I'll be talking with you soon. Those of us living with people suffering from a mental illness have a lot to deal with too. They're not the only ones hurting. We hurt with them. Having a supportive community is so important to your health. Would love to hear your story too. Email, of course they make me crazy, at gmail.com. <laughs>